Hey, Josh, how you doing? Other than just feeling wise. Good, Bill. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks. I, uh, I, I just want to ask you if you feel like defenses, you know, from what you've noticed, are starting to um, show some tendencies just in terms of how they're they're playing Mac or how they're trying to defend him or maybe trying to speed him up. Um, I saw one, you know, I don't I'm sure you guys are working off your own numbers there, but I did see one statistic where it looks like he's among the most frequently blitzed quarterbacks in the league. Um, and so have you noticed that the teams have maybe tried to speed, speed up Mac in that way? And how has he handled those moments in your opinion? I, I, I don't think there's, um, you know, there's a little bit of copying in, in our league. Obviously we all know that. Um, <clears throat> But I, I think when you look at the um, the broader foundation of of eleven games and uh, the way that it's gone, there's certainly been an element of testing um, testing the waters with uh, regards to pressuring and blitzing us a little bit more. Um, but you know, some teams have had success with that, and some teams haven't. Um, we've done better in some games handling it and producing uh, against it than we have in others. Um, I think that we always try to look at the things that have given us some issues over the last month to six weeks, because generally speaking, that's probably what the opponent is, is looking at the closest and try to see if we can't um, help ourselves improve in those areas during the course of the week of practice. Um, personally, I think Mac, um, you know, Max done a, a really nice job throughout the course of the season of trying to handle almost anything someone's thrown at him. It's not been perfect by any stretch. We all know that. But uh, again, for his first time seeing some of this stuff, uh, being able to react to it, being able to handle his responsibility, being able to get the ball out of his hand most of the time and to the right place. Um, I think he's been fairly effective doing that. Um, there's definitely been stretches where that, you know, that's challenged us. Um, and we need to be ready for that coming down the stretch here. Um, you know, regards to the other night too, it, you know, there was a few, a uh, few situations where we all have to do our job. Uh, when you, when you do well against the blitz, it's not because the quarterback knew it was coming only, you know, it's the quarterback has to be aware of it, but you know, there's, there's five guys on the offensive line. Sometimes there's tight ends, fullbacks, halfbacks that have responsibility to, to, to do their assignments properly against blitz, blitzes. Um, and if one man breaks that chain against a pressure team, uh, you know, it could look like you have a bad play. So um, I think in general terms, um, we'll prepare as if we're going to get a, a, a normal dose of pressure, which basically we do every week and try to do the best we can to pick those up properly and uh, go to the right spot with the ball when we do. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Go to next question, Jim McBride. Hey, Josh. Uh, wanted to ask you about Mick Lombardi and your experiences working with him. Uh, obviously, he's been the quarterback's guy. He's been the receiver's guy. What areas of growth have you seen from him? And just what's he? What's he? What's his coaching style like? Yeah, Mick's uh, first and foremost. Mick's a fabulous human being. Um, obviously, he comes from a great family. I know his parents very well. Um, I thoroughly enjoy uh, working with Mick. Uh, he's bright. He's extremely hardworking. We don't have anybody that works harder than he does. We have a lot of guys that work really hard too. And uh, he puts in the hours. He's here early, here late. Um, his group is always prepared. He's very thorough. He's a very thorough coach. Um, his group would tell you that. Um, he makes sure that every T is crossed and every I is dotted in his position group. Um, he, he sees the game um, very similarly to myself uh, in terms of the passing game. He identifies coverages very well. Um, he, he handles a uh, huge responsibility in terms of reporting on our red zone um, and prepares, you know, our, off our team offense uh, for that area of our, of our game plan. Um, and so he's, he's just, he's a pleasure to work with. Um, you know, you, you love to have young coaches that are eager to learn, uh, that understand that it takes, you know, a great work ethic, uh, great attitude every day, which is what he has, um, and a great drive to be the best position coach he can be. 
his, his, his goal every day is to do his job as well as he can do it to make sure his receiver group is, is ready to go. And uh, I think Mick's uh, excellent at doing so. <clears throat> Thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. oh, next question, Bob Sosi. Hey, good morning, Josh. Hey, good morning, Bob. I want to ask you about some of the situations you saw in Atlanta that, that you alluded to with regards to blitz pressure uh, and packages. And I know that Shane Bowen and Mike Vrabel are their own coaches and they're going to prepare the Titans in, in, in their philosophy. But having played against a defense coached by Dean Pease and called by Dean in, on Thursday night, is there any correlation based on what you, you know, his track record and his influence on, on the Titans uh, to what you're going to see on Sunday? Uh, in, in terms of blitz packages, and does that help prepare Mac and, and the rest of the offense for this game? Well, there's definitely, you know, certainly there's a link there. Um, we're all aware of <clears throat> Dean's time with Mike. Um, so I think there's, there's definitely uh, some things that are similar. Uh, the front structures that they use, uh, some of the coverage families are similar. Um, you know, they, they have every blitz that you could, you know, that you could choose to use. Um, and most defenses somewhere in their system probably do. But we've played Mike enough uh, with or without Dean, uh, but we've played him enough to know that, you know, whatever Mike thinks the right thing to do to stop you or disrupt you, you know, early downs, third down, red zone, goal line, short yardage, whatever – you know, they think is the right formula to use against what you do offensively, that's generally what they're going to employ. So you can look at all the scouting reports you want and you can sit there and look at last week's game or yesterday's game or a game from four weeks ago and try to project what it is you're going to see. Um, but the bottom line is, is they're a really well-coached defense. Mm -hmm. They are extremely good in situational football. And so – that speaks to me to, one, their preparation, two, they know their opponent, and three, they execute it on the field when it's called on Sunday. So, you know, we're going to probably practice some things that we won't see, and we're probably going to practice some things that we take a shot uh, that we might see from the past. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to have to uh, put a plan together that we feel confident in, that we know our players can play fast and be aggressive doing and then we're going to have to keep our eyes open. We're going to have to communicate well with each other. And we're going to have to do our job. Uh, and the few plays that we we didn't do a very good job of that the other night, we were hurt with. And, and that's what happens in our league. So um, I'm sure Mike is uh, obviously going to be well aware of those things. And we're going to try to fix the things that we, we know we need to fix. And we're going to have to be ready to go because this is going to be a huge challenge. This is certainly – uh, the, the, this is the best team we've played so far this year. So we're, we're, we're going to need to be at our best on Sunday. All right. Thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. We'll go next question, Andrew Callahan. So, hey, Josh, I just had a quick question, generally speaking about facing teams that um, use a lot of single high coverage. And I know that's something that obviously proliferated throughout the league. We started with Seattle uh, about 10 years ago. But when you know a team's dedicated to kind of taking care of the middle of the field, how does that force you to adjust knowing we've seen a lot more kind of too high throughout the league more recently? Um, you know, I mean, you, the, I'd say the biggest thing for us is, you know, we have to read it out on every snap and you have to be true and honest with your reads and you have to try to, um, you know, see, see what you see before the snap, but you have to confirm it once the ball is in your hand. And we have to start with our eyes in the right place as we're reading the, the passing game out and understand the, uh, the things that each coverage would present to you as opportunities and understand what each coverage tries to take away. And at the end of the day, our job really is gonna, gonna be to try to find the weakness in, in the coverage or um, the profit in every play. And, and see if we can take advantage of those. This week's will be a big challenge because they do both. Uh, they play a lot of post, they play a lot of split, and they'll mix it in there and they'll make it look like the opposite. They'll disguise really well. Got one of the best safeties in the National Football League, clearly, in Bayard, um, who if, you're, if you do the wrong thing, if you don't 
uh, see the coverage properly. He's going to take the ball away from you. He's shown that clearly over the last five years. Um, so there's challenges in both, um, you know, doing things against split safety or post safety and the teams that mix it up pretty, pretty well, like the one we're getting ready to play. Um, you know, that's kind of a, uh, there's, there's, there's multiple challenges in that. So we're going to need to be ready to go on both, both areas. Thanks, Josh. Mm -hmm. Go to the next question, Mike Reese. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Good, Mike. How are you? All right, doing well. Uh, two, two, two parts here. Uh, how would you sort of characterize um, Janu Smith's sort of first year with you guys, and and what you've sort of learned about him that maybe you wouldn't have if you hadn't been coaching him sort of day in and day out. And then, if, and then you don't have to answer it, but if if the play is as significant as I thought it was when I watched it, Max tackle. On the interception, obviously a play he didn't want to make. Mm -hmm. Like it looked to me like that was a pick six. If he doesn't at least get in the way, um, like what's the coaching point on that? You don't want your guy to get hurt, but like you know, it is football. He's got to protect the points, right? So I'd be curious your thoughts on that. Sure, um, John is uh, you know in free agency. You don't always uh, we we got to meet Johnny before the draft, uh, so we had some. Um, some intimate knowledge of who he was. Um, and certainly he's a high character person um, that is a hard worker and, you know, he's a great teammate. And so works, works hard as craft every day, um, tries to improve in, in each area that we ask him to. Uh, the tight end position, obviously here and everywhere is, is a unique position because you're involved in so many different things, run blocking, pass receiving, pass protection, you know, alerts, motion, you know, there's a lot of different things you have to do well. Um, and John, who's tried uh, really hard to do all the things we've asked him to do. So um, I always, always think of the first year that we have an opportunity to, to have a free agent in our system as kind of our, you know, it's a foundational year for him, you know, for Hunter, for Kendrick, for Nelly, you know, these guys that come in, it's their first opportunity because they're still learning similar to some of the rookies, you know, they might have heard NFL vernacular and been around NFL football, but, you know, sitting in Bill's squad meetings, listening to what we do and what we try to do on a week to week basis, um, you know, fitting into how we change the offense from one week to the next to try to attack the defense's weaknesses or protect our weaknesses. Um, you know, those changing identities within the same you know, drive, you know, I'm the X here and the Z there, I'm the Y here and the F there. I mean, there's some things that we do that I don't know how much of those things happen other places. So always look at the first year as kind of a year to try to build the foundation with these guys and try to improve every week. And I think that's what Johnny works hard to do. And we still have a long way to go this season and a lot of uh, room for growth with all those guys uh, that I mentioned. So I'm excited to do that, but no, no question. Uh, He's he's he adds an element of uh, unique ability at the at the position, and uh, he's he's been a he's been a good addition, a, a great teammate. Um, Max play against Atlanta, um, yeah, you you would like to never have to have your quarterback make a tackle, but I think that kind of speaks to one his awareness of what's happening on the play, and then his competitiveness to do the right thing. Um, you know, sometimes you throw throw an interception and you can recognize quickly that the play is not going to go very far and you just try to protect yourself and protect the team in doing so. And then there's other times where if you don't make the tackle, this could change the game. And uh, I think that we saw that that play had the potential to be a, a play that would affect, you know, the score certainly and maybe the momentum for sure in the game. And so... Uh, give him a lot of credit. He's a tough kid, um, you know, and obviously you don't want your quarterback have to do much of that during the course of the year. But if if it's needed and required, that's why we wear shoulder pads, why we have a helmet on, um, and that's why we we lift weights. So, um, you know, uh, credit goes to him for understanding the situation and then doing the right thing. And we'll go last question, Doug Kide. Hi, Josh. Uh, do, you, do you find that Mac throws a, a catchable football and or a more catchable football? And, and if so, what makes it a catchable football? 
Uh, definitely. Um, he, the, I think the first thing is ball placement. Um, you know, your accuracy and ball placement is something you can work hard to try to improve as a coach, but many times naturally a player will have that, uh, that will be their strength or weakness. And I would say that Mac uh, came here with that as a very strong um, point in his game. Um, he, there's an anticipation, a hand-eye anticipation based on how fast the receiver tight end back, how fast he's moving across the formation, how fast he's moving vertically, and then where you, when you have to let the ball go and when you let it go, what trajectory do you have to let it go at? Um, and there's a lot that goes into that in, in, a, in a short amount of time. And Mac has naturally had the ability to lead his receivers, put the ball in a place where they can catch and run in front of them um, and try to keep it away from the defenders at the same time. Um, I also think he has the awareness. Um, we talk about understanding who you're throwing it to and how far away they are. Um, you know, because if you're talking about a back on a check down who's seven yards in front of you, you know, you don't need a howitzer, you know, to blow his helmet off, you know. And and so understanding that is a different throw than, say, the in cut he rips in there to Kendrick Bourne the other day, you know, where the window is smaller and we need to get it in there quick because the window is closing. Um, and so I think, you know, any quarterback that um, – that is is an, an accurate passer, um, has good ball placement, has an understanding of changing up the pace of his throws and understanding who he's throwing to and, and what kind of throw is required in order to make it a successful throw. And, um, you know, Mac, Mac does a nice job uh, at, at basically all those things. And um, I think we've seen a lot of different types of throws from him during the course of the year. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks, Josh. Yep. Thank you, guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving, guys. Appreciate you guys. Yeah.